you. Yes. New jacket? Uh, kind of. I haven't, I haven't worn it in a while. Um, and it was, it, it was my dad's before it was mine. So it's, it's old, but it's, it's new for this year. I had a leather jacket that I liked a lot, and I didn't take care of it, and now it's like all cracked and stuff. So yeah. it's a it's a nice jacket. <coughs> the only the only real issue with it is some of the lining is is that's a little messed up. What? That's, that's something that I can fix. That makes it worse. Is, is, is this a bad? Well, I didn't. I wouldn't. Have, I would put out the head. That's not really the second thing. It's the. It's the spatula. Did you finish the review? Anything? Yeah. Just, okay. I just. Not really. I mean, it looks like you obviously tried to do something. Oh. I did not do. Yeah. 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 I heard that you, you made seating, new seating charts for every other class except for this one. <coughs> That's not true. That is true. It's not true. From my, my personal end. Okay. Did my zero hour A day class get a new seating chart? Zero hour? Yeah. Really? We're starting that right now. It's yes or no. I don't know. Okay, did my first period get a new scene chart? Yes. No, they didn't. Oh. Are you gaslighting me? No. Mm -hmm. I am not. That meme reminds me of the spherical cow. <laughs> The spherical count. No, the spherical count. You know that? It's like, uh, for the sake of simplicity, um, uh, Okay, I need, uh, your test, sorry, test review, your unit review, number 33. I did not take that up from you last class, so I need that with your name on it. Our quiz is no calculator, so go ahead, clear your desk off. is where two points, so the one point question is either right or wrong, 
but all the two-point questions I can get partial credit on. Uh, so make sure your work is easy to follow and I can find it. I need you to pick up once you're done with the quiz. I did not put it on the front table only because it would have been in your way during the quiz anyway. So once I get your quiz, uh, just go pick those up while you wait for everybody else, please.
Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs>
So I need y'all to find something quiet, please. <clears throat> Should not be needing to carry on a conversation.
I don't want to spend a long time on the next handout today, but I do want to go ahead and at least start it since it is some new stuff that will make it a little bit easier for you next class. So your quiz grades are in the grade book, but you'll need to make wait for those six people to come and make it up. We had a lot of school business this morning. Um, so since we have started unit college boards unit nine, it has nine topics on there. The first three were about parametrics. So we did that, quizzed on it. That was your third quiz. Then we did three more topics, which was on vectors, which was the main focus of what you did today. And then there's three more units, or three more topics um, within unit nine. And then we will review all of unit nine and actually test unit nine once we get there. But the next three parts are all about polar. And I think for most of you guys, polar is gonna be something new. So that's why we're not gonna get too deep in it today, but I'd like to at least get through question four. So if you forgot to pick up that handout, you need to hustle and get that. So again, we're only gonna do a tiny bit of this, but let's talk about what polar is, how to use it, and um, go from there. Okay, so when we graph things, when we graph points, you're used to what's called the rectangular coordinate system. You get an X and a Y value. The X value tells you how far to go right or left, the Y value tells you how far to go up or down, and then you plot the point. And that's fine. In fact, one of the first things we do is figure out how to switch back and forth between these so that we can lean on the stuff we're more comfortable with. But another way to plot a point is in the polar coordinate system where it's not X comma Y, it's R comma theta. So what do you think R stands for? Radius. Okay, and what do you think theta stands for? Okay, so you know a length and a direction. So whatever theta is, let's say this is theta, if you go R distance and then put down a point, that's how you can plot points in polar. So again, rectangular is how far left, right, up or down, plot the point, move on. Whereas polar is telling you to go this far in this direction at this angle. Now, of course, that implies we're coming from the initial position. Um, so if this is theta, what would be going the other direction? Negative theta. And actually, R can be negative as well. If R was like negative two, instead of going to this direction, it would go two in the exact opposite direction. So R can be negative. Um, okay, so to switch back and forth, these are kind of like our formulas that kind of help us uh, move, move along here. So if you're given something in polar coordinates, you can change it to rectangular by knowing that X comes from R times cosine of the angle and Y comes from R times the sine of the angle. So you gotta put that up. I'm not listening. No, you need to be participating in the way that you're filling this out with us. Because you didn't pick it up after the I quiz. I see it. But I told you. Go get it. I understand. I'm well aware. <clears throat> okay. Now, to me, these two should make sense. Why do you think the cosine one goes with x and the sine one goes with y? Where have you heard that before? Unit circle. Right. The unit circle. Cosine helps determine the x length. Just like in the unit circle, cosine is the x values. It's just being multiplied by a scalar. And just like in the unit circle, sine determines the y values. So same thing with polar. Now, if you have x and y and instead you'd rather have polar, you can determine r this way. And this is really just staggering in theorem, right? Because if you think of this as x, y, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, because it's a right triangle. So if you have x's and y's like this, you can change them to r's. 
and to find the angle really you can do any SOHCAHTOA uh, but if you have X and Y you can pair those two up opposite over adjacent gives you tangent and of course if you wanted to know the actual angle you would need to do inverse tangent of that but if you'd rather if you happen to know X and R I guess you could do inverse cosine if you'd rather but usually you have X and Y so using this as a guide <coughs> for just the first couple questions they ask us to convert the following polar form into rectangular form so you look at question one and some of this stuff can be changed so what is r cosine theta equal to so r cosine theta equals negative four is the same thing as x equals negative four which we're going to come back to this in just a minute don't we know what this graph looks like it's a vertical line where x is always negative four Sketch that on your paper because it's going to come back in just a second. Okay, you look at question two. I notice that I've got an r cosine theta. So if r cosine theta is x, then r cosine theta is x. Why is this not considered rectangular form? Right. You need it in x and y if you want it to be that. So instead of saying r squared, we could say that is x squared plus y squared. Again, that's up in your notes, so that's one that you really want to memorize. All right, that's not the nicest looking graph, so I'm not going to graph that one. Okay, before we start substituting stuff in number three, what do you think we could do to maybe make it look a little bit nicer? Very good. So you could multiply both sides by the denominator. Okay, somebody else, maybe what would come after that? Okay, let's distribute the R. And then at some point, you're hoping to see R cosine theta, because that's really just equal to what? Okay, and then r minus r sine theta, which is equal to y, and now it's in rectangular form. Now, we actually know what this graph looks like also, because this is just mx plus b. I mean, I guess I need to add the y over, subtract the 4 over, but we know it has a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 2. So we know what that graph looks like. So sketch that on your paper real quick. It doesn't need to be super accurate. <coughs> but before we come back and talk about the bottom piece here, I think there's something on the bottom. Yeah, there it is. Before I show you this on the bottom and how to take the derivatives of it, I want to sidestep for just a second and talk about some of the calculator stuff because uh, it's going to help you kind of understand a little bit better about these first few questions. So if you have a calculator in front of you, you should get it out. If you need to come borrow one, you can as long as you do it quickly. Or Diego can just hand them all out, it's fine. Okay, so let's say I would like to graph that question number one that we did in my calculator. So when you need to go graph something, you would hit Y equals. And when you hit Y equals, what is that? How is that going to help us? What is everyone else has theirs? They're not using he, he it. Was literally on They're not right using now. it. He's, he's got his calculator out participating. just opened it, though. No, you didn't. Okay, so how am I supposed to graph this then if it's y equals? Because I want to graph r cosine theta equals. Um. Okay. 
Say what? You can. You can change the mode. So if you hit the mode button, did we talk about this a few weeks ago? Okay, I think I showed you with parametrics. But if you go down to about the fifth option, you can actually have it do parametrics. I'm not going to go in depth here. But if you change it to parametrics, now when you hit y equals, notice it wants to know what x is in terms of t and y is in terms of t. So that's good too. But for today, we're interested in polar. So highlight polar, hit enter, hit y equals. And now all of a sudden, it's not y equals, it's r equals. So if I want to graph r cosine theta equals negative 4, I could divide the cosine theta over. And notice when you hit the x button now, it says theta, because it's in polar mode. So it knows that's what you want. So I just solved it for r equals, like we often solve it for y equals. And when I graph this, what should it look like? It should look like y equals negative 4 the same rectangular equation that we came up with. Okay, and then question three, if you wanted to graph that, it's already in y equals, so you could say r, I'm sorry, r equals, r is equal to four divided by two cosine theta minus sine theta, and it should look like the equivalent rectangular equation we had, which was y equals 2x minus 4. OK with that? So that at least convinces you that when we're converting those, it's not that it's necessarily diff um, it's not different mathematically. It's just the equations look different, but they're really achieving the same thing, different things. Okay, but I'd also like you to play with this for a second because there's some pretty cool stuff that you can do here. Uh, we used to do polar in pre-calculus like nine, ten years ago for a couple weeks. We stopped doing that because you don't need polar until BC. Most high school students don't get to BC. You don't need it in AB. And typically students needed to be reminded how to do this stuff anyway. So that's why we just pushed it off. But graph something like, well, make sure you're in radians. If you graph something like uh, cosine theta, to graph that, what it's doing is, just like a graph normally plugs in a value for x, solves for y, plots the point. <coughs> Moves x a little bit, plugs it in, solves for y, plots the new point. It's doing the same thing, but now it's doing theta. It's starting off with theta at 0, and it's increasing, and it goes all the way around the circle and it's plotting all those values as it does that. So here's what cosine theta looks like. Here's what cosine theta looks like. And that's a little small so you could multiply it by something like 6 and that would make each of those values 6 bigger. So what does that look like? Okay. It's actually not an oval, though. It's actually a circle. So why does my calculator look like an oval if it's actually a circle? Because of the, the y distance between them. What do you mean? This is negative 10 to 10, and this is negative 10 to 10. The size of the screen. Right. Your calculator has more pixels horizontally than vertically. So if you want it to look accurate, there's this thing called zoom square, the six option and it actually boxes it in to make it look proportional. So notice when I change it to zoom square, now it looks like a circle. Okay, also my circle is on top of which axis? Yes. What if I wanted to land on the y-axis? See how that changed it? X has to do with cosine, or cosine has to do with x stuff, y has to do with sine stuff. Okay, uh, what do you think happens if I add 2? You think it's going to go up 2? It's not making all the y values too bigger like you're used to. It's making all the r values too bigger. It's going to make it bigger. Whoa. So as it does 
theta is zero, theta is pi over six, theta is pi over four, theta is pi over two, et cetera. And then it starts going down here and it does when theta is three pi over two, r is actually a negative, so it plots it up. R can be negative. So like when theta is three pi over two, R is actually, uh, I guess, negative four. So instead of going four in this direction, it goes four in the other direction. So not what you would anticipate. What if I did, I think, didn't we talk about this part before? Okay, if I say, um, if I put a three next to theta. So as theta moves along, I'm multiplying it by three, so it does it like three different rotations. Any guesses what that's going to make it look like? It is not three times larger. You get a flower with three petals. Well, it's cool until we start finding the area of these little petals. Okay, what if I make it five theta? What do you expect? If I make it 55, what do you expect? Well, the, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but then eight's on top of one, nine's on top of two, ten. So it is that. I mean, you're right, it'd be 55. So that must mean that two theta is going to be how many petals? Wrong. What if I said seven theta? Seven petals. What if I said four? Eight. There's a pattern there. Right, if it's odd, like three, that's how many petals you get. If it's even, it's twice that many petals. So that's something that we used to test on in pre-calculus when we did that. Okay, also, just for your knowledge, and in case you wanna play with this in a minute, but like we said, you could also add something. So if you add a value out here, it changes it up a little bit. But if these two numbers are the same, this is a six. If I make this be a six, I believe something else interesting happens. Okay, never mind. Maybe it only works for cosine. Let's try three petals. There was one more thing I wanted to show you and I can't remember. Oh, maybe it was just data was one. It's been like nine years since I've done this. Okay, yeah, here's what I was going for. If these two numbers are the same and theta is just one theta, you get that. You see how it makes kind of, instead of looping around in here, it kind of just makes a little bit of a dimple. And instead of uh, fixating it on the x-axis with cosine. I'm going to switch it to the y-axis with sine. And I'm going to flip it over. What is that looking like? Okay, it does look like an apple. What else does it look like? You might know this if you had girlfriends. It's a heart. <laughs> it's a heart. That doesn't look like a heart to you? It does look like a heart. What's the medical name for a heart? No, that's not the medical name. If you go see a heart doctor, what is he called? Okay, this type of graph is called a cardioid because it looks like a heart. That's the real math name for these, that type of graph, that where it doesn't loop in here, but it just does this. 
And then if you don't want it to loop, again, you can like change one of the two numbers so they don't match up and then they do a little bit of a, a loop there. So anyway, I just wanted you to see that. I wanted you to make that connections for questions one and three. Um, and I wanted you to see that you're welcome to play around with your calculator because you can make some pretty cool looking stuff. But for today, I just want to finish up with this, how to take the derivative, and then look at just one example where we're actually doing derivative. So um, up here, I would suggest you rewrite this. I'm not a big fan of this. They're saying x is equal to f of theta times cosine theta, but f of theta is just r. So personally, I think you should just stick with x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. To take the derivative, it's similar to some of the other stuff we've been doing. You will take the derivative of y in terms of theta divided by the derivative of x in terms of theta. So if I was doing that for this general equation, what is the derivative of y in terms of theta? How would I take the derivative of this? It's going to be product rule. Take the derivative of r with sine left alone plus r left alone times the derivative of sine. You have to do all of that just for the derivative of y. But if you can do that, then you can do the next part. The derivative of x is also product rule. Derivative of r with cosine left alone and then r left alone times the derivative of cosine. So this is like, personally, I would not memorize this. I would just memorize this. Just make sure that you know what x and y equal to and that when you take the derivative, it's got to be product rule. Okay, so one question where we actually try to apply this today and then we'll leave everything else for next class. Um, also note, you know, I didn't type this up, but the following example is a common problem found on the AP exam. So one of the things that we can anticipate to see. They tell us how big R is and they want us to find the slope of the tangent line. So slope of tangent line, what is that asking for? Okay, the derivative and it's wanting the derivative at theta equals zero. So let's worry about the derivative first. So we're going to take y prime over x prime. I don't know what y equals and I don't know what x equals, but well, y is always equal to what? Okay, so I guess I can, if we memorize this, with the product rule, I can do its derivative. And since x is always r cosine theta, I can do his derivative with product rule. That should be a plus though. Okay, isn't that what we came up with on the other page? Okay, so here's my r. I could find r prime. Derivative of one is zero. Two sine x would or 2 sine theta would be 2 cosine theta. So in place of r theta, we could put 2 cosine theta. In place of r, we could put 1 plus 2 sine theta. They gave that to me. Plug in r theta again. Plug in R again, and it's a little scary looking, but we're going to come back and now plug in zero for all of thetas, and so then it should come out to be a number. So I've got two times, what's the cosine of zero? Okay, times the sine of zero, which is? Good news, so all that goes to zero. 
plus 1 plus 2 times the sine of 0, which is still 0, times the cosine of 0, which is still 1, divided by 2 times cosine squared, which would be 2 times 1 squared, minus 1, minus, oh wait, 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 my bad. This needs to be distributed. This would be uh, minus sine x, which would be minus 0, and then minus 2 sine squared, which would be 2 times 0 squared. So when all of this goes to 0, all this goes to 0, this part goes to 0, in the end you're left with a 1 half. So it's pretty pretty messy looking, but and I guess it would should be scary to you if you don't remember unit circle. Um, but that's kind of the process that we go through. So we'll save question five for next time. Um, but I feel like that's a good stopping point. It introduces you to polar at least, and then we'll review those couple again in a few minutes on Monday next week. But at least that part will be familiar to you. Um, you are welcome to go and grab your homework if you didn't think to grab that out of the white box after the quiz. And for our puzzle today, you guys did the eye test last time? Yeah. Okay. And after the eye test, if you, obviously this is optional. If you want something to think about at the end of class, there's your puzzle. When I go to grab uh, the Jamaica Hard Foot, you get an error message. Yeah, because my dimensions aren't right. It says inbound PIN. Go. This is the most common mistake. You go to Y equals. You see how these are not highlighted in that one area? Mm -hmm. That means you have slot, that plot one on. So go up to one, hit enter to turn it off, and now it should be okay. We were doing that in uh, physics. Yeah. Physics messes everything up. Yeah. All right, thank you. You guys don't have to wait in line. You can wait till other people are done. It says I have a 15 out of 16 on this. 15 out of 16? Well, 15 out of 16 is pretty good, too. Well, I like the point. Okay. Yeah, which, that was your board, third clue? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know the answer to this, by the way, but I guess once you get the answer, you should know if it's right. Oh, I know. I got it. You're 100% sure? Pretty sure. Don't, well, don't say it out loud. Let people who want to do it do it. Yeah, I got it. I'll tell it to you. Why write on a post it now? Yes, sir. I like these. These are, these are tiny. It wasn't too hard. Well, yeah, but do you just guess and check, or do you try to do it algebraically? I just guess and checked. Well, that's what I would do, too, but at some point I would give up and just try to do it algebraically. First one I've gotten that's like like in a quick time. So you know. I was thinking like 
we could make the top left box A, top right box B, bottom left C and D, and then you could make four equations. Well, I would probably make a matrix and let my calculator solve it, but y'all don't know how to do matrices in your calculator, I don't think. Mr. Reef showed you. Why do you need uh, matrices in physics? Oh, I'm sorry. That was, I did that in college algebra. Well, when you did reduce, did you do? Ooh, 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 I got it. When you say that, did you mean that like you did one, one, one? No. Something, 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 something. That would have worked. That could have worked. Okay. That's not too bad. There's also one called Gauss Jordan elimination. I know what it is, but I saw it. Where by hand, you have to make. You have to do that by hand, and then your answers are over here. Oh, X is equal, Y is equal, Z is equal. That's the one we did. Okay. Yeah, but do it by hand. Yeah, I can't do it by hand. Sure, you could. Yeah, it's not much fun. That's a lot of fractions. Oh, goofy. Okay. I was thinking too complex. Yeah, it's a weird one. I was thinking way too complex. You gave me one for my homework, but it was a 10. So. <laughs> well, you didn't staple your papers. That's why you can only get a one. What? Nothing. That's oh. <laughs> not possible. What? This is not possible? Oh. Well, I didn't make it up. I like to find puzzles online that there's videos to, so if y'all really care to, about how to do it, I can share. I wake up at 